and very happy to welcome leading actor Tom Payne, the director Philip Stölzel, and the producer Rolf Bauer. Please come on stage. Yeah. Um, Tom, can you look at me? Okay. Sorry, hi. I just wanted to check if your eyes are as intense as in the movie, and they yeah. are. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> because I didn't know what you did. Okay, so um, <laughs> <laughs> great to have you here. It's a bit stressful at the moment because there's a big world premiere. You do all the interviews, press conferences. So how do you all feel? Well, this is the first one. This is okay. The first so we are the starting ones. Yeah, okay. and I think this is kind of a nice, a nice easing into it. Actually, it gets kind of crazy on Monday when we do a whole day of back to back. Okay. Things. Um, it's my first time, so I think I'll be fine, and then probably never want to do it again. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> fit at the moment. Yeah, it'll be yeah. fine. Yeah, okay. looking forward to it. Should be good. So, uh, how about you? Excited? No, it's getting it's getting a lot of suspense in um, in this game because um, we worked on this project for more than four years, and now we will have a premiere at Monday. We we did a lot of uh, work for the marketing campaign in most of the territories. The film opens at the 25th of December and um, the audience will take the decision how many tickets we will, we will be able to sell. Okay, <laughs> so Philip, <laughs> as being the director of the movie, you have been working on it for a few years. Is, was there a moment when you could easily say, now it is finished? No. <laughs> okay. No, I never. It's, it's hard. At some point, the, um, the producer said, you have to let go now. <laughs> <laughs> Because you sort of, I mean, the longer you work on it, the more you sort of get lost in the details. And um, still now it's a pain to watch it. Because, you know, you watch the movie and, um, and there's, I just see details that should, could be better. <laughs> that's okay. It's he sort made of a great <laughs> movie. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not to say that uh, you know, I don't like the movie, but it's just to explain the process of filmmaking that, you know, you start um, by, you know, writing the screenplay and then, you know, you imagine that world and then um, once you get going and produce and, and prep, you know, it's, 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 you know, it gets more, you know, it's get gets more and more like a whole, you know, big sum of details, really. And then you add it for a long time. In the end, you know, sound work, there's so much, is so much millions of little uh, jigsaw puzzle pieces you add together. And um, I mean, there's all these stories about the crazy directors like uh, Francis Ford Coppola, who just <laughs> never, never were able to finish a movie and they edited it and edited it and then um, everybody got crazy about the movie not being finished, but I can so understand it because you sort of, it's hard to say it's now done because you always, uh, when you're passionate about your work, mm -hmm. you always feel there could be something that could be done better. And I think it's a normal moment where like the other people say, now you have to go away <laughs> and let the movie alone. Go out and that of that's the also, studio. Uh, yeah, and it, in a way it's, it's sort of a, um, it's a relief then. Mm -hmm. You can, 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 so uh, can have other people judge it or not so yourself Wolf, anymore. That was a big part for you as being the producer to sort of say, Philip, out, stop, now, it's <laughs> done. <laughs> We've made a great attitude, movie. The attitude of a, of a director who really uh, is um, uh, trying to get the best out of um, um, the storytelling, out of the material is uh, named post-decisional regret. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when he is taking the decision, he, he has some doubts. And th then we come into, into the game and um, Nico and I, we try to convince him that he is on the right track. And um, he's a great artist, I think, and uh, he made a wonderful movie. Um, and it's exactly, by the way, what Nico and I envisioned in the very beginning mm -hmm. when we started to convince Noah Gordon uh, to uh, give us his trust and to give us the film rights to do this movie. Mm -hmm. We were talking about the production uh, a bit later, but do you remember when you first had the idea to, to say, I need the rights, I want to make a film out of it? Oh, the physician's journey to become a movie is a story of its own. Uh, I was reading The Physician um, 26 years ago, shortly after the book was published in the United States. And I immediately um, uh, asked for the rights, and the rights have been given away uh, one week before. So Ooh. it was quite, quite sharp. Um, and it was um, uh, perhaps to, to our advantage, uh, it was obviously quite difficult to make this, uh, uh, this movie happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know even the reasons, but 20 years after that time, the rights were falling back to Noah Gordon again. 
And when I was informed about that, I um, took Nico uh, Hoffman and I jumped into the airplane to Boston and we, we got an, an uh, appointment with, uh, with Noah and he was very suspicious about producers because <laughs> he was so disappointed. Uh, he had waited more than 20 years to see a movie based on his uh, beloved novel. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it took, I think, uh, um, four journeys to Boston. Uh, to convince him about our vision and um, uh, then he um, gave us his trust and he said uh, um, do it and um, try to do it as good as you can and um, therefore I said um, Philip did exactly what we promised to Noah mm -hmm. so um, I think we are really in line with that promise and I'm pretty happy about that. Tom when did you get involved? Did you make an audition? Uh, I did. I okay. had been involved um, I think before, yeah, before Philip. Um, well, I wasn't really involved. I'd auditioned for it a year he before. He picked me, <laughs> so not the yeah. other way around. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, said, I said, it's okay, you can hire Philip, I don't mind. Um, but I had auditioned, yeah, w when it was a, a different version of the script um, and a different director attached. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd done an audition the year before and then the project changed again and the director fell out. And, um, and then a year later, it came back and with Philip on board and a very different script. Um, because this, the, the book is so um, um, long and it's a, it's a real um, big long adventure and in order to really make it work you need to um, bring it down to its basic um, important themes mm -hmm. in, in the movie which is what I really felt like Philip um, did because the first script that I read there was so much going on at, as there is in the book but for it to be a movie it was just too much mm. it, didn't quite, um, it wasn't linear enough and didn't have um, the themes coming through stronger, strongly enough so then yeah it came back to me a year later um, and um, yeah they, that was the first time actually I'd been cast off a tape that I had done um, from abroad because I've been living in Los Angeles and sending tapes back and like, you always do those tapes and you're like okay you do your best job but then you kind of send it off into the ether and hope that something comes of it, but I'm always, I would much rather meet someone in person. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, so then, uh, then somehow the producers decided that I was a good choice, and um, me and Philip Skyped um, from Los Angeles, and then if, uh, literally a few weeks later I was in Germany doing um, read-throughs and costume fittings, and it was a very quick um, way that it happened, actually. And, and when, I, when it first came, I admit that I was quite scared of it, because it was the first time that I'd done um, a big lead, um, and it's a very big movie. <coughs> and um, I had kind of natural worries about, oh, God, well, okay, this is huge responsibility on me. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but, you know, I thought about it a while, and then when I went to Germany and met with the team and, and we, we spoke about the whole thing, and I just became more comfortable with it, um, it was a lot of fun. And I really enjoyed okay. it. It's and good. you still feel comfortable with it? Yeah, okay. yeah, I do. But like Philip says, it's difficult because you come on, um, you start a film, with uh, with a view of what it's going to be like, mm -hmm. and then just through through filming, like different things will change and fall through, and and it develops as you go. And then in the edit as well, Philip, you know, will have been still molding it because we come and do our job, and then actually the film that we make generally is it's never exactly what the actor thinks it's going to be at the end because the movie is a director's medium and they they decide the the final cut. But um, but certainly I feel like um all the actors gave uh, the performances that um, the movie deserved. I think it's worked out really well. Uh -huh. There are many interesting actors involved besides yeah. you. <laughs> it's yeah. Ben Kingsley, Emma Rigby, Olivier Martinez, uh, Elias Mbarek, Fari Yardim, and of course, Stellan Skarsgård, which is probably my favorite in the movie. And maybe we see a clip. Thank God we are living today. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we haven't been sick <laughs> at that time. So, Philip, um, it's always very difficult to give a short description about what the movie is about, but um, more or less it's a journey if we bring it down to the very bottom. <laughs> Would you agree? Oh, definitely. It's a journey, um, I mean, a physical journey from the, um, the, the, the west to the east, from the old... European uh, countries into the Oriental world, and it's also um, a journey from from darkness into the light. Really, um, it's about a guy who wants to he help, to heal, and to know. So it's a, it's sort of a bit. Um, sometimes um, you know you could describe it as a, a sort of a Christopher Columbus of medicine, <laughs> really. That um, um, a guy who's um, ready to cross all borders, even moral borders of his age to um, bring science forward and bring medicine forward and 
be able to help and heal people in a better way than <laughs> it was possible at that time. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of the essence of this um, this um, this story. Mm -hmm. uh, it's um, what I what I really you know like about the book that this is about you know is is a is a sort of entertaining adventure story on the one side, and on the other side is a is a book about I these big and sort of weighty themes, right? I mean, it's about religion, about ignorance, about the war between the cultures, um, and about the difficult path of science that science has always uh, gone. Um, and this balance of uh, sort of entertainment and, and stuff to think about is, um, for me, really the essence of movies. So um, mm -hmm. I, th I think it's great if you can can wrap something um, important into something that is easy to digest or is fun to watch. Uh, Tom, for you, what is what was? Did you immediately clinked to the role of Rob Cole? Was it just a natural? Okay, I I know what he's like, what what he's going through. I think it, um, as a character, he's very much um, an archetype, really. So he is the young, um, pure-hearted guy who. Um, isn't held back by any kind of preconceptions of how you should be. Um, his youthful spirit just drives him forward and he's always the first question who says, well, why can't I do that? Why, why is this the accepted norm? Um, and, uh, you know, he's driven by right at the beginning of the movie, the, the death of his mother is a huge um, driving force in his life because y w what you said at the beginning about living at that time, yeah, most people, you just died. <laughs> like, if you had, like, <laughs> if you had a problem, you, you know, a serious medical problem, you died from it. Um, and um, his mother dies, th dies at the beginning, and, and he wants to find out what it was that killed her and, and, and doesn't really understand why you wouldn't want to know and mm -hmm. why, um, um, yeah, why, why there is no advancement and why people just accept that you, would, you just die. Um, so he, um, and it's such a huge driving force that he leaves behind his father figure, um, uh, the barber played by Stellan, um, uh, to travel, to, to find out. He, his Stellan's character tells him that um, it's not possible, you shouldn't think about these things. Um, and then um, they see, he sees a, a miracle, they go and see this healer who um, cures Stellan of a, of, some, of a problem that he has. And it's something that um, the barber had told Rob couldn't, isn't possible, mm -hmm. this can't happen. Um, and then he sees it happen, so then he just decides, well, okay, I can't learn anything more from you, and I need to, um, I need to know more. And he hears about Ben's character, even Cena, um, and so decides to take, undertake this huge mm. journey to go and learn more, because there is someone who knows more. But then, even in the movie, um, even Cena says, well, you can't do this, and you know, we can't do that, and he does it anyway. Like, um, so in the end, he you know, becomes the medicus, the, the physician, like he, he becomes mm. the guy who did push it, push it forward. Um, so I, I definitely identified with that. I was very, um, I had a problem with authority when I was growing up and that kind of stuff. And I like, okay. I was always <laughs> like that probably incredibly annoying young man who's like, well, no, explain to me why I can't do this. Explain, don't, just ex don't just expect me to mm -hmm. say, oh, right, okay, you said I can't do that. Right, okay, well, I'll stop then. Because that doesn't, that's just not part of my character. Um, and so I definitely identified with that, with not accepting other people's absolute truths. Um, and I really enjoyed that. And he's just a really pure, um, mm -hmm. kind-hearted character, so it's really fun to play. And also, with the huge backdrop of the movie, for me, I was like, wow, this is exciting. This is a movie that I haven't seen in a long time. Like, we used, like, Lawrence of Arabia and, and movies such as that was oh. this huge scope um, as our template, really. Um, and. I knew when we were filming it quite soon, like a few weeks into filming it, I went and saw a bit of the playback. And ev it was only really then I saw these amazing like paintings that we were making in the film that I went, oh, wow, we're making that kind of movie. Wow. Because I hadn't, you know, you haven't seen it in a long time. Mm -hmm. And then to be in that movie is like, wow. It's even okay. better, probably. <laughs> it's <laughs> completely <laughs> crazy. And then we, you know, we went out to the Sahara Desert and filmed on the dunes and there's no CGI involved in any of that. It's just amazingly mm. cinematic and beautiful to look at. Um, so yeah, I wanted to go on that fun journey as well, <laughs> and we did. We did. It was very fun. So Wolf, um, it must have been a big effort to produce this movie because 
how many sets did you have, and all the costumes. And seeing it, it looks like that everything is sort of handcrafted, especially for the movie. Was it like this? Exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, but that's a, a question uh, uh, Philip can answer much better, but uh, I think the decision to take the, the heads of department in, into the creative team, uh, uh, Thomas Ola and uh, uh, Mr. Kremer, Udo Kremer, as a set um, uh, designer, as an architect, I think it was um, very important for the movie. And if, if you look at the details, uh, you can really see that's all original. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. and, and because we made the, the movie for the big screen, uh, we um, made very sure that uh, also on the big screen, this is a perfect picture. Uh, but uh, going back to, to your first question, I think it's so interesting to see that um, Noah Gordon's novel, um, The Physician, restarted a kind of genre, mm -hmm. uh, the historic, epic, big novel. Uh, and you couldn't think of the name of the rose or pillars of earth without um, The Physician of Noah Gordon. And still today you can see that, that there's an appetite for it. Mm -hmm. If you go into a bookstore, you can see today dozens of uh, historic novels uh, on the tables. And uh, if you see films based on historic novels, think of the big success of Pillars of Earth in the World, or Pope Joan, or, or as I said, um, um, uh, Name of the Rose. Uh, the appetite is still there, uh, and we can see it's even on the rise. Uh, therefore, I think um, the physician ma uh, makes an important point in literature as well. And mm -hmm. uh, I j just talked to somebody um, in, in the back room here, and, and she said, oh, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so keen on looking at the, at the physician because I have read the novel three times. <laughs> and I have seen daughters which uh, uh, were reading the, uh, the physician, and I expected how could an 18-year-old girl read the physician, a 27-year-old novel. She did it because her mother was reading it, and she was loving the novel so much that she was recommending to her daughter, please read that. So you, you can see there is a, um, a lot of life around um, uh, the physician. And uh, I remember that I think in Spain and in Germany, the, uh, the novel was uh, counted as one of the most beloved books of all times. Oh, of I think all it times. was okay. between the, the most important books um, uh -huh. uh, of all times in, I think, number three or four. So you can see next to the Bible. Mm. Yeah? So it was, it was quite <laughs> impressive. Next to, to the Bible. <laughs> that sounds very good. <laughs> So, uh, because we talked about the, the sets and the costumes, maybe we see another clip. This is sort of the maybe called turning point of the movie when the plague comes into the city and the, the, the main character, Rob Cole, is studying and he's trying to learn everything and now it's go he's going back from studying to sort of real life. Um, what I we talked about the, the, the crafted things, but it's also, you probably all three did a very long journey into like, medicine, like how was it at that time? Because when we st start, we, we see the, the plague and these sort of, how the people looked like when we're, they were almost dying. So what was the most interesting thing you all three learned by going into that time? It's the 11th century, so it's, it, it, it's quite a journey. I, I think one of the most interesting things that I didn't know was that um, the Far East, where I travel, where the character travels, was so much so far in advance of, of the West at that time, mm -hmm. um, which I didn't know. And there's a, they were performing cataract operations then, which I, I thought, I mean, I never in a million years would have imagined that they were doing things like that. Um, they were far in advance of anything that I thought, but whereas in England we were still, I mean, it was literally the Dark Ages. It was, you know, mm -hmm. you died or you, you know. <laughs> yeah, and it's shown yeah, in the movie, it's it pretty yeah. dark. Yeah, totally. And then, yeah, and then the play comes and that's, um, something else entirely and very scary um horrible thing which actually you know they they do what they can but th they can't really stop it they come up with a solution um to ease you know they they find out what's causing it but they don't cure the disease mm -hmm. it just you know comes over them rob says you know the plague washed over us and took away our you know took away our people and we could do nothing to stop it it's, um, so it's a very scary time really there's very um, unsightly and visible disease. Um, and how, yeah, how do you know if you're going to survive or not? You don't really. You don't really, yeah, I, mean. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Although Rob does because he has his, his gift. Yeah, he has his mm, gift, but help. others <laughs> yeah. are not that lucky. No. So Philip, 
how about you? Well, I think uh, um, uh, Tom had a very interesting point here that, um, uh, like nowadays, it's so we tend to sort of we tend to look down a little bit on the Arabic countries, Oriental countries, either judging us being the civilized part of the world. And it's interesting to look back and um, look back at an age where it was the other way around, where mm -hmm. like the European countries were the barbaric <laughs> countries, the sort of they were like sort of back in time, all the knowledge of the Roman um, culture was sort of lost. And really where things happened and uh, science was brought forward um, um, was in Persia and in Arabic countries. And um, it's, a, it's a good moment to take a moment to think about how much of our culture today of medicine, of mathematics, etc., cetera, et cetera, um, comes really sort of out of the Islamic culture. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think it's a good moment to pay this culture a little bit more respect than we do nowadays. So, and I like that aspect um, mm -hmm. uh, really a lot because it's, I think it's, I, I come from a, you know, my father is a historian and I think it's always, I grew up with the, um, with the, um, with the opinion that you can learn a lot from the past. And this is, um, this is where I think the movie um, even if it's a you know historic epic and it's like 1,000 years ago, the story takes place. I think it's it's in some ways, especially when it comes to all the religious stuff in there, is a very um, present and um, a movie for today. So and that's 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 a nice balance mm -hmm. the project had. So Wolf, from the producer side, maybe that was the idea behind it to make to tell a story which is set in the 11th century, but to make it as modern as possible so that people from today can sort of have an immediate cling to it and just feel not not like seeing something old or s mm. stuff like that. I think the essence of the novel is, um, and that's very important for Noah Gordon, uh, he pointed that out to us, is the uh, tolerance between religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can uh, see that always individual beliefs are right or wrong. You can make, take your decision for your own. But organized religion always leads to fundamentalistic attitudes. And if you go uh, into the uh, story of uh, medical science, um, the 11th century was really in the center of dark Middle Ages. Dark? Why? Because uh, all the achievements of the Greek and Roman culture have been forgotten mm -hmm. due to the rules of a fundamentalistic church. Therefore it was not allowed uh, to to develop wisdom here, because everybody believed in the grace of God to be healed. Uh, and then they died mm. uh, quite early. So the average age was 31. Yeah? <laughs> uh, and, and this wisdom was preserved in, in East Rome, in Constantinople, and in Persia especially. And there was this uh, um, um, university, this madrasa, where even Sina could, could teach, based on the, on the old um, achievements of, uh, of Gaal and from Greek and from, from other important scientists of medicine. So um, we at the end of the film, you can see that fundamentalistic um, um, attitudes are coming back um, uh, to, to our heroes as well, because uh, the mullahs are taking over mm. in Isfahan. And um, therefore, and I, I, I really love this idea that the, the light of wisdom um, Tom uh, or Rob Cole finds um, uh, in the hands of Ibn Sina, uh, he will take it back to uh, the medieval ages in Europe and will enlighten that part of the world again. Mm -hmm. I really like that <laughs> idea. That's a good, a good aspect. So maybe it's up to you and the audience now. So is there any question? If so, please wait for the microphone. So, ah, yes. The girl, the blonde girl here in the front. Um, I just got a question for Tom. Um, have you read before filming um, the book or have you read it? Uh, I started to read the book. And then I realized that we weren't, um, that it wouldn't, wasn't helpful for me to read the book, actually, because um, as, a, as a, an actor, you have to go off the material that you have. And sometimes it's helpful, because if, so if you're playing like a real person or whatever, but if you um, veer off the script that you have, that you're working from, um, it makes it very difficult, um, because then you're not all working on the same page. And I, I, I read about 100 pages of the book, and then I, I and I would I mean I mean I'm a big reader and I, w I, I read all the time but I d I felt like it wasn't actually that helpful for me because there are um, we do veer off from the book in in the film there are 
kind of major events that um, happen in the book that don't happen in in my personal relationships in Rob's personal relationships with the barber and with people um other people in the book so um actually I didn't think it would be helpful f- um, for what I for my job that I to do my job the best that I could I didn't think it was helpful for me to um because it would just be a distraction and uh, I would I would be thinking about that and and then we would we would just have loads of arguments about the character. <laughs> I thought like actually let's just stick to the script that we have, which I was very happy I I was very happy with the script that we had so. Um but now I will read it now. I'm going to meet Noah soon and I'm going to be really um embarrassed. <laughs> so I have to uh, I'll have to um no I will definitely read it now. But now that we've done it and now that I uh, probably after um we've done all this press as well actually because I don't want to be thinking about it and second guessing things and stuff. But I will I will definitely read it now. Yeah. More questions. There was one on the right side. Um the film looks really amazing and I was wondering could you tell us something about the production, the actual production where you would shoot all those amazing sets and how long the production took? Uh I guess it's a question for yeah, me. It's for Philip yeah, yeah, yeah. and for Wolf, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we shot for 65 shooting days. It's quite sounds quite a lot, but actually for this um, long and um, massive project, is, it was pretty short. So we had a, a lot to do each day. And uh, we shot it in, um, half of it was shot in Morocco, in Wazazat, which is a film town um, east of the Atlas Mountains. And it's a place where, um, since Lawrence of Arabia, the all the p- um, people from all over the world um, come to shoot their movies. <laughs> um, they're specialized on Bible movies there. So I have a couple of uh, studio lot streets that are, uh, uh, before we came there, we sort of had a Roman style. And they have a, a landscape around, um, um, th- around this town, which is um, actually pretty looks pretty biblic. There's even a, um, a hill called the Crucifying Hill uh, where um, I think about 40 film Jesuses have been crucified <laughs> already. <laughs> so Not we went karma. there. Uh, yeah, and, and, and <laughs> it's really like they're all the Moroccans who are partly farmers, they live there from doing extra work. So um, um, And they know, ba- I mean, basically all these guys, they had much more international film experience than us because they've been in all the Ridley Scott movies. <laughs> So we went there, and um, uh, our great um, production designer just uh, changed all the these Roman um, streets into Persian streets, and um, and that was like the, the the major part of the shoot. And then um, a part of it was shot in Cologne, um, where we built a big studio set to have a sort of very focused work there, uh, shooting the interior of the madrasa and the um, um, and the palace of the Shah, etc., etc. Um, and then uh, part of it was shot, believe it or not, um, in Thüringen, <laughs> which is a, um, a, a nice landscape in the middle of um, the, uh, Germany. And uh, there we shot the English parts. That's um, due to the um, German uh, fund system where you have to spend part of your money in uh, uh, Germany. So it wouldn't be possible, it wouldn't have been possible to go to England. But um, there's some great castles and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's uh, there's all the uh, all the romantic architecture uh, that we could use because one thing about shooting a movie in the 11th century is it's almost like shooting a science fiction because there's n- really nothing there. I mean, there's um, really I mean the only little bits and pieces of architecture are just you know some churches, but just a little bit, just uh, ruined castles. That's it. There's no nothing really nothing like even the um, the landscape obviously totally changed. Um, the, the trees are different. The way you know the, the humans shaped the landscape in the last uh, 1,000 years have been uh, done massive changes to what you see. So, um, well, you shot you shot some plates in Scotland as well, didn't we? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's um, there, there's um, there's there's um, stuff. All the white shots are sort of mixture on foreground work in Germany and um, uh, Scottish background plates. And even, you know, the, there's a scene where um, the Rob says goodbye to the <laughs> barber at the coast of England. <laughs> and it's, I think it's a pretty well done sequence. Yes, it's it's great. It's look, it looks, and it was shot on a <laughs> just a hill outside Magdeburg. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, that's, the, that's the big advantage of filmmaking today, that um, there's anyway uh, so much stuff you uh, generate in um, VFX uh, visual effects then that um, um, you can actually do shoot an English 
movie in Thüringen. <laughs> so it, I think it looks uh, looks as good as if uh, we have shot in England. Do not d destroy the magic of the <laughs> making too Sorry, much. Sorry, okay, cut, 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 cut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there's always, there's always a magic because if you, if you think about 11th century, uh, nobody knows yeah. how life um, uh, looked like, uh, how it smelled, how it felt. Nobody knows mm -hmm. because um, there is not enough knowledge and uh, it's, it's not uh, delivered into our times. Uh, so we had to reinvent the 11th century in a way, which gives you some more freedom. Yes, of course. Uh, to do it, but uh, but if you look at the at the movie, you can see, yeah, that feels like 11th century, as you know. And by well, the way, why we shot in Turing and then why d did we shoot in in Cologne? Yeah, because we um, financed this film around about 40 million dollars budget, totally out of Germany. Normally, you you do for size of uh, of this budget, you have to do co-productions uh, with French, Italian, Spanish, uh, English co-producers. But wh what is the consequence out of that? You have to compromise, because then you have four or five cooks in the kitchen, uh, and um, it, will not, it will not end well. So we decided not to make any compromises, really to take the responsibility and to take, together with Philip, uh, our creative decisions. Uh, and this worked out pretty well. And it's astonishing that $40 million can be financed out of Germany. So it could be a, a role model for other big movies as well, uh, movies with um, some sophistication, with the European touch, uh, but with a kind of Hollywood style, which makes it uh, for the big screen. So the movie comes out on the 25th. So you all d will not have quite Christmas, I think. <laughs> 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 so what are your feelings? It's called Nervous Christmas. <laughs> kind of nervous Christmas, ho hopefully no Christmas breakdown or something <laughs> like that. So um, maybe as the last question, uh, what are your feelings now? Is it relief, happiness, excitement, anticipation, looking through the, the outcoming of the movie? A anticipation, definitely. It's the first, <laughs> I guess it's the first big thing for me, really. Um, so I'm just excited. Um, I'm excited to see it with an audience, actually, because mm -hmm. um, I think it's it's a very entertaining cinematic movie. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to Monday um, and when it opens, because I just want people to see it now, really. And I want, I think it's a, yeah, it's an enjoyable film. And I want yeah, I want other people to see it because I've we've been you know working on it for so long now that it's time for people to see it now. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm looking forward to that really. And then I'm gonna I don't know if I'll be here. I'm, I might go back to America and miss it all. <laughs> but I don't know. I might hang around. If it does well, I'll probably hang around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how about you? Well, I mean, um, I spoke to so many people in the last um, two years while I was doing the movie, and um, this is really a novel that means a lot to a lot of people. So um, I'm I'm actually super excited to to see how these all these people feel about the movie because I th I think it's if it does if we have done a good job I think it's um, uh, the movie will give sort of an emotional experience to uh, that adds to the mm -hmm. uh, to the book and it will mean something to people and that's really what I what I hope um, that, that that it means something and. Obviously, you want the movie to do well and, you know, have good numbers, obviously. I mean, it's an expensive movie, so it needs to... Mm -hmm. I mean, if it makes sense only if it reaches a lot of people. But also, you know, apart from the numbers, I hope that the, the people who go there and watch it have that sort of emotional... and find that emotional link to it. Mm -hmm. That's really my, okay. my hope for Christmas. Please, please, <laughs> Santa. <laughs> <laughs> you might hear it up there. <laughs> so, and how about you? I feel a lot of excitement. Okay. Um, uh, next week we will have uh, Europe in seven days. It starts uh, with Berlin, world premiere. Then next day is, uh, for me, Brussels. For, for you, it's Vienna. Then we go to uh, Zurich, uh, to Madrid, um, to Moscow and to St. Petersburg. Every uh, evening a premiere. World yeah? tour. So th that will be an interesting week. And uh, I'm also excited because we did everything we could to make a great movie. Um, I said it al already, I love it. I really think it, uh, uh, it's exactly what we had envisioned. And now we want to share um, uh, this, uh, this wonderful um, piece of work with millions of people. Uh, and um, the 26th of December will be the day where I will get uh, an email or a phone call where my distribution partner uh, from Universal will tell me how the numbers are. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, you can see already at the first day, yeah. at the first evening, is there a want to see uh, pressure from the audiences? Uh, and if, then I'm the luckiest man on, on, on the planet, and you as well, and Tom as well. Um, if not, I'm in desperation. But um, <laughs> we, we, have, uh, we have quite uh, good hopes, and we have quite good reasons, still. because we have got so much good feedback. Mm -hmm. on the film from people who watched the movie already, from um, uh, test screenings, uh, from journalists uh, who, who watched the movie. And the biggest thing is that you don't want to have negative comments after um, a journalist uh, screening. And we got quite a lot of very positive uh, reactions. So we have um, good reasons to, uh, to, to have the greatest hopes. So thank you very much for coming. I wish you all the very best. Thank you. Um, the physician comes out on the 25th of December. Um, thank you very much, Wolf Bauer, Philipp Stölzel, and Tom Payne. And you're going to see it as a podcast on iTunes very soon. And don't forget to see the movie. Thank you very much. <laughs>